Is that what I think it is? Is that a Agro Shops 5 featuring Urza's incubator? I gotta take a look. All right, welcome back, Vintage Gamers, to what will be the beginning of a long month of off-stream recorded content. Um, if you're interested in why I'm going to be doing a bunch of off-stream recorded content for the next month or so, uh, I'd urge you to check out the pinned tweet on uh, my Twitter. That, that should have all the information you need to understand what's going on. The good news is that nothing's really changing from the YouTube side of things. I'm still going to be uploading every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm still going to be playing challenges and prelims, um, but I'm just going to be recording them off-stream. Uh, I might probably even be recording more videos than normal, so maybe you'll get more uploads every week. We'll have to see how that pans out over the course of the month. Now, you probably know that a way to get your deck list played on this channel is a donation deck list. You would just pay, pay some money, we go over your list, we make changes, and we get it played on the channel. Another way to get your deck list played on the channel is you simply win with it. If I see a fun list in a 5-0, in a top challenge top 16, there's a high likelihood that I'm going to want to try it. And if I'm going to try it, I might as well show all of you while I'm doing it. And so <laughs> we got a reality sculptor over here who 5 0 with what is just a beautiful looking aggro deck. <laughs> it looks like a modern deck almost. They have put together an Urza's Incubator deck. Urza's Incubator, three mana, enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures of that chosen type cost two less to cast. The chosen creature type for this deck is Construct. And between all the Constructs you see here, we got 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32 Constructs in this deck. And that's not even counting Construct tokens, which probably uh, don't count at all anyways. But we have a Construct aggro deck here. Um, lots of returning uh, workshop staples in this deck. It looks like a lot like the old school uh ravager ballista decks of old but it, it's sweet i actually think this deck is actually in a pretty cool spot in the metagame because this deck has got to be really 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 nice against lurus saga so it actually kind of makes a lot of sense um so yeah you have your walking ballista hanger back walker x cost constructs you got steel overseer pumping your team chief of the foundry pumping your team inspector making things cost less incubator making things cost less we got the scrap work recombiner cool little modular construct that you can sack artifacts and search for construct tokens or not tokens creatures um the new and powerful construct automaton uh and this list opted to play <laughs> four lupin prototype which is just a really cool card that never really panned out anywhere uh five five that can't attack or block until a player has no cards in hand um has some sweet urza saga targets with shadow spear to help clock ozolith to move around counters and skull clamp to maybe get some draw going you could probably do some really serious draw things uh, with the fact that things all cost less. They're really easy to play, uh, though it seems like it's missing a sack outlet to do that. And I was planning on playing this list as is the exact 5-0 list, but uh, I think I'm going to make one very small change. And I know everyone is going to be sad that we're not going to play with Lupin Prototype, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the Lupin Prototypes and play something that is not a construct. It's a beast. Uh, but it's an Arcbound Ravager. And I think Arcbound Ravager is going to seriously up the power level of our deck. Now, it won't get uh, cost reduced by Urza's Incubator, but, but the Walking Ballista Ravager combo of sacking your board, putting it all onto the Ravager or, or all the Ballista and attacking, or making a big walker and then making a bunch of flyers. Uh, the fact that we have a Skull Clamp in this deck, um, although Ravager is not a construct, I think it just ups the power level of our deck significantly to the point that I feel bad if we didn't play it. So I'm going to make just the small change, and I apologize, but that's the one change we're going to make. I'm going to leave everything else as it is. I'm not going to touch the beautiful looking 443 sideboard of Mindbreak Trap, Dismember, probably for Collector if I guess, and uh, Cages and Crypts. I do think that this deck could probably benefit from strip mines and wastelands. Uh, probably doesn't want spheres. Doesn't really feel like a sphere deck. Um, but you could probably still play Chalice and Trinity Sphere. But I am going to respect the 5-0, respect the trophy. We're going to play this list almost as is, except we're going to bring in the big old Ravager for old time's sake. 
I'm at, like you, people will probably look at this list and laugh, but I do really think it actually hits a pretty nice metagame spot. Um, I've been trying to encourage people to take advantage of the weaknesses of Luris Saga. And one of the big weaknesses of Luris Saga is its removal suite is very lacking. And this deck should very much overpower, um, like especially a blue-black removal suite, maybe less so for the blue-white with the Swords of Plowshares, but I'm actually pretty excited. We'll see if it plays out. We want to dodge a little bit of combo maybe, uh, but there's a lot less combo in the metagame lot right now, a lot less bizarre in the metagame right now, and a lot more blue control in this deck. It's ready for blue control. Are you interested in weekly vintage metagame recommendations? Do you want to see your deck list played on my channel? Or maybe you are just looking for the best way to support my vintage content. Make sure you check out the Patreon link in the description below. Let's battle. All right, here we go in round one. I just got like a, a mental image reminder of something. This deck actually reminds me a lot of the patchwork KCI deck that I played for a little while, the Zeus creation. And in fact, if you want to see more Zeus like decks, Zeus is actually making Magic the Gathering content for Vintage again, or not again, maybe for the first time. Uh, but if you're interested in seeing Zeus decks in action from the creator, uh, they, he's got a channel up on YouTube. So definitely check that out. Um, one of the problems right now with I think a payoff like KCI is it gets Force of Negated, where this deck, this deck does not care about Force of Negation almost at all. It's just the Incubator, right? And some Moxin, so that's another big upside. If Luris Saga decks are playing four Force of Negation, our deck is set up very nicely for that. So we do have all of our three drop artifacts in this hand, which makes things a little challenging. However, if we get a Foundry Inspector in play and an Incubator, then all of our things are free. I think one of the bigger decision points a lot of times here is going to be whether or not you want to cast this Ballista. Oh, <laughs> we're going to play a workshop mirror, an aggro workshop mirror, except that we are the Urza's incubator version. I feel like that should put us in a good spot. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh. Workshop Black Lotus is a little hard to beat in the Workshop Mirror, though. So, if they, like, tax us, things could be pretty bad as well. Nettle Cyst. That's a card that's not in our deck that's going to be very challenging as well. Hmm. We do miss out on some of the best that Workshop has to offer by playing our little um, on-theme deck here. But if we can stem the tide here... We should be able to really beat them with some some mirror breakers. Mox. Okay. So. Hmm. I have four mana. I have an ancient tomb. I can play an inspector, but then I can't play anything after. I could just play the incubator. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> that mox is incredible, right? Because I can play the incubator, make this cost, and then one, and then everything. Oh, wow. Wait a second. This is so cool. This is so cool, chat. Oh, uh, wow. All right. I'm going to play Urza's Incubator, which is the first time I've ever done that in my life. And I'm going to name Construct. And then I'm going to play Foundry Inspector for one mana. Chief of the Foundry for zero mana. Chief of the Foundry for zero mana. Now my things are about as big as theirs. <laughs> I think we're going to wait on this Walking Ballista, though we could technically play it as a 1-1 one, one right now. That's actually a 3-3. Three, three. I think we're going to wait. I like that the Chief uh, and the Foundry Inspector have these nice new old frame versions to go with this sweet old incubator. I got a nice looking board here, huh? One of the problems currently, though, is although my board is sweet and I did play it all for free without having to use a Black Lotus, my opponent's board is still stronger than mine. So... That's not ideal. We're going to have to see what we can do. So if we play this Ballista for two, three, three counter. Oh, man, Urza Saga 2. This is why we need Wastelands in our deck. And Crucible. Infinite Urza Saga. We're running out of time. Man, that's brutal. We're going to have to probably draw some combo action or something. This is, I do think we want to have Wastelands in our deck. 
Patchwork Automaton. So that costs nothing. And then this... costs three less. So this costs this. X is currently three. Three plus three. These attacks are just not good, though. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess we're supposed to shoot this thing down. So I still can't attack, because I can't ping this uh, without paying. So, all right. So how big are these constructs? I guess they can't make constructs yet. They need another land to make constructs here. That's actually pretty big. But I guess once it completes, there's a problem. If they don't draw something that makes constructs here, it's also still bad for us, right? Because it means they drew something that matters. Uh, how do we win from here? I don't know. Just don't know. We're going to have to start attacking. Okay, they didn't make any constructs this turn, and they won't make any next turn. Those are big. Workshop does nothing for me. Absolutely nothing. So, I can attack with Inspector, and I can attack with Automaton. Those are both attacks that work. Because I can pay. Even if they block here, I can pay twice. Still looks bad though, doesn't it? Nettle Cyst and Patchwork Automaton are two of the most powerful artifacts ever made for this workshop deck. It's been really interesting to watch them um, because, I mean, they both were obviously immediately picked out by workshop players as cards that could be powerful, but they didn't see like immediate play. Um, and over time, they have just become uh, four of staples in basically every kind of workshop sphere list. Okay. So this is fine. I'm just going to shoot the patchwork. Pay. Shoot the patchwork. Pay. And that kills off both of their token creatures and both of my creatures, leaving us with the superior board state for the moment. Oh, I should have probably played the workshop, but I don't think it matters too much. So now they get to turn this saga into, I don't know, a soul ring probably, right? I wonder what they could have drawn that they wouldn't play. Maybe just a mox. No, they should have played a mox because it makes the dental cyst bigger. I'm not actually sure what that means. Like, didn't you play anything you drew that turn before? Not sure. The problem is any creature can become a nettle cyst. It immediately stymies our board. We don't really have any ways of, like, growing from here, do we? Not really. I would say we're probably not looking like we're going to win this game. Maybe if we were on the play, it was more feasible. But even then, it's not like we... I think our our draw was just not as good, right? Workshop, Lotus, Automaton, Nettlesis, Saga, in with Crucible. Crucible is definitely a card that is extremely strong in the in the Workshop mirror. Something another thing that's an issue is our we're not really getting better post board. So ooh, it's unfortunate I don't have a I don't actually have a a thing ready to shoot this. Not that I could, I guess. So it's automatically bigger than my whole board and they have a shadow spear. It looks just doomed. Damn, Urza Saga. You gotta interact with Urza Saga. You can't really just do nothing about it. Wait, I have an Urza Saga. Does that matter? I don't think that matters, unfortunately. I 
Does this help us? I guess if my opponent again doesn't draw a land and we make constructs and they don't make constructs. I mean, our constructs are bigger than their constructs. Ooh, second saga. That's probably it. Yeah, I mean, they equip the Shadow Sphere. Wait, why don't oh, they want to make a construct so they're not equipping Shadow Sphere? Interesting. I have to block this because if I don't, then Shadow Sphere is always lethal. Things are very bad. Crucible is, like I said, very, very, very strong in the workshop mirror. Well, we don't even gain anything post board, right? We have Dismember, but I'm not even bringing in Dismember, right? It doesn't seem like that card does very much. Automaton is free. Should get this workshop in play. No reason not to play the Automaton. I have no attacks. I have a big construct, but it's not going to be big enough. They get a construct every turn for the rest of the game. Yeah. There's a difference between construct now and construct forever. <laughs> Damn. All right, we'll have to see how the post-board matches go. I still think I should be favored in the abstract here. Oh, I guess they don't make a construct this turn again. The problem is... Hmm. So if we draw Ravager... If we draw Ravager, we can get a Skull Clamp. And then I think we can win. I think I just have to trade every time here. Ooh, wait, no. I mean, if they were going to give me that block, I would snap off that block and go to one or whatever. But this, I think we just need to take this trade. Patchwork could be lethal if we draw. I'm just like thinking of the things we can draw. 13, 12. Yeah, so I, I think our best draw is Ravager. And because I put the Ravager in the deck, we can get the Skull Clamp. And we can, like, skull clamp away all the things we draw and try to draw through our whole deck and, and like, play an automaton. That Try to, like, make a lethal automaton. That seems like the best line. So if we draw Ravager here, we can get skull clamp. We did not draw Ravager. So I don't think we can get skull clamp anymore, unfortunately. Maybe we just can. We need the Shadow Spear, but how do we really win this game? The way we win this game is to go crazy with Skull Clamp. So I'm going to get a Skull Clamp. I'm going to equip the Skull Clamp to this construct. Because I'm going to be blocking their Shadow Spearing Nettle Cyst of Death. Hopefully we can live through that. I don't know if we will. Probably won't. But this is how we win the game. We have to combo kill our opponent. That's our. That's the thing we have the advantage in. We have this ability to maybe go through our whole deck and, and lethal our opponent. I don't know if we do have that ability. It feels like that's a, probably a thing we can do, but I'm not sure. I mean, it might be that they make too big of a thing here and we just die by trample, right? I feel like that's also possible because they can equip a nettle cyst to a construct token that doubles it immediately up to it'll be 10 20 20 20 21 oh they have a key ah that's that's just lethal okay um my opponent's playing that weird version that has like a little bit of everything in it it's got shadow spear and key in the main but it also like crucible and colos and stuff very interesting Okay, I mean, that's where they have the advantage for sure. Nice. Honestly, I think this game was actually close. Um, I do think we had some serious outs. But yeah, uh, infinite, infinite uh, Crucible is pretty rough. 
do I want to bring in one Tormod script to answer the infinite crucibles? Not really. I don't think that's how we win, right? Like, I think we just play our game and we battle. The cost isn't super high, but like drawing a shadow uh, Tormod script, and if it's not good, like they only have, like, say they have two crucibles and they just don't draw crucible and we draw Tormod script, it's like a huge, it's a huge problem, right? I think we're just better off going to aggro. I like this idea, though, of um, having access to Crucible's Gold Clamp. It's very similar to playing KCI, where things cost less instead of you gaining mana. Um, maybe we don't gain enough mana, right? Because theoretically, everything you eat costs one more to we equip. Yeah. It seems like it's less strong than KCI, but it at least gives us something to strive for, really. Um, it's worth noting that our opponent can just play Null Rod and our deck is not exactly happy about it. That's not great either. Also, our deck is a little weak to Wasteland, huh? This seems like there's a lot of issues, but it's okay. I mean, we can do our best we got, we can. And I, you could definitely see the power of what we did. We played our whole hand on turn one and it was like, what? 15, 10, 12 power. It was like double digit power for sure. We kind of, you know, played an aggro vine draw, if it, you could say. I think that's kind of an intriguing idea. And we deck had serious less acceleration than our opponent. I guess we had a uh, soul land plus double moxin. Opponent had workshop plus lotus. Slightly stronger. <laughs> I'm gonna have to read this card, huh? Whenever a creature leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on the ozolith beginning of your combat and your turn the counters on it you can move them all into a creature interesting i don't know if that does a lot but seems sweet you can remove all the counters if you overseer and then sack everything to ravager it's been a long time since i've done any ravager math yeah, I kind of forgot the fact that Skull Clamp was going to cost us one for every equip. It probably wasn't going to get us there. Unless this hand just doesn't have any mana in it. Unfortunate. This hand has mana, but kind of awkward. I'm going to keep for sure, though. Double Saga. I'm just going to put back the Hanger back. Uh, maybe I'll put like the Chief instead of the Hanger back. Well, when am I ever going to play this Hanger back, though? Opponent on a mole. Keep on six. Saga gaming. Saga gaming. Overseer gaming. Maybe we're supposed to bring in Dismember just for Revoker. I didn't consider that. Feels a little silly, but does seem like an issue. Like, Null Rod turns off everything, but Revoker can just turn off uh, Ballista, and then it's, I guess... It has to take Ballista first always, and then they can hit Overseer. It's a very classic workshop style game plan. So we're going Saga tokening. All right. Are they naming the Soul Ring or are they naming the Steel Overseer? They're naming the Soul Ring. They're saying, Do you have an ancient tomb? And the answer is yes. I'm just doing this now. I don't know if it can come back and bite me, but I'm, I like the F6 value that I'm seeing, so. So this next turn, we make another Construct token and then get a Black Lotus or something. Or, God, we can do anything we want, really. Wasteland the Saga. All right. So they had a Wasteland. They were trying to take a gamble. Or maybe they drew the Wasteland. Oh, God. Crucible Lock. We might have enough stuff here where Crucible Lock doesn't matter. Kind of feel like we do. Gonna get a Saga going to make them Wasteland me again. And get a Chief in here. Suit the team up. Get in. This Construct's humongous. Yeah, this is exactly how I kind of feel like the matches should go. You just have a lot of different attacking engines that are really, really strong. It's hard to slow down, but on the play, my opponent will have a lot more answers. So, 
definitely a play draw dependent matchup for sure. Yeah, take the W. Sweep. I don't know if my opponent had a wasteland or they gambled on me not having a tomb. If my, uh, tough to say. Uh, I think I do actually like having some dismembers in my deck now that I think about it a little bit more. I don't know what we're taking out, though. Kind of need everything, don't we? Maybe we trim a... I don't know. Trim a... <laughs> trim a recombiner? Maybe we just trim two recombiners. I mean, Recombiner can just get a Construct every turn, sacking Moxon. It's so sick. All right, I'll screw the Dismember. <laughs> I'm off it. Rubbish. What do we got? Double Workshop, Incubator, Inspector. I mean, going to keep it. Pretty hard to mulligan workshop, workshop, tomb in the shop mirrors. The opponent hasn't shown us null rods or spheres yet, but they could. This looks a lot like turn one incubator on construct, turn two inspector plus one. Man, they've had workshop all three games. It's pretty good. Trinosphere, sure. I guess we are no longer going to be playing Urza's Incubator. Well, I guess it's fine as long as we pay three, right? Hmm. Probably still just supposed to play Inspector. Not great. This just means we have to play at least three. If we pay seven, then what are they going to do? Ah. Yeah, Ursa's Saga off of Golos feels really hard for our deck to beat. <laughs> I guess we can go wide. Or are they just going to go Caracas for the value? Could be annoying. Why did I play in Foundry Inspector? Why didn't I play Earth's Incubator? Because it doesn't reduce Foundry Inspector. But if I play Incubator, I could have just played a bigger thing. Oh, they got Strip Mine and had Saga in their hand. Yeah, I mean, we're just not beating this, right? Which is really not a good sign. If we're not beating the other Workshop decks, not a good sign. I think we just, like have to have Wastelands in our deck, right? Oh, so I can play a six mana Ballista or Hanger back. I mean, I should just play the Incubator first. And then I should play a Hanger back, I guess. I mean, it's still a 3 3 Hanger back. It's pretty good. Next turn, we can make a huge Ballista, I guess. I mean, we're just getting straight. Wait, wait. Yeah, we get strip mined though. Man, it's tough. It's really tough. It's just really tough. Saga is that strong. We don't have our own and we don't have wastelands. It's pretty hard to get into a saga war if you don't have wastelands. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to do something like that. Oh wow, they're just vault keying us? That's so tilting. Because it's super tilting. I mean, we're dead. We don't have any. We don't have any interaction for that. We don't even have a needle in our deck. All right. Well, we're just gonna concede because we're we're just stone dead here. My opponent had a very very strong mull here. Had all the good cards. Workshop triple ball. I mean, I'm not sure really if this was just like variance on draws. Like my opponent's draws were pretty close to the best you can ask for in both in like most of the matches. Had workshop every game. But I do think that we were pretty exposed by not having Wastelands in our deck. We don't even have a Needle to search. A Needle would have gone a long way as well. Not in that game. In that game, I think we're just blown out of the water by my opponent's draw. I don't think we're just ever coming back from that. Which is pretty crazy because, like, the Trinosphere was basically irrelevant. Like, the Trinosphere was never going to matter in this game at all. 
the problem was they had like workshop soul ring into you know into golos plus saga strip mine it just was too much brutal it's pretty funny i just played against this player in a legacy league recording but here we go round two of vintage looks like they're gonna reveal luris which is what we want to see probably though our hand has a bit too much mana in it probably still a keep though has too much mana but it has a saga to threaten a wasteland and then we have follow-up plays so i'm not actually upset feels like it's fine definitely not our best hand by any means Let's see what happens first though <laughs> I think I like this deck less than the KCI though. I feel like just having that option of like really having true true combo kills over like a huge aggro engine. Mm. We'll see what happens. Underground C go. So I actually have Urza Saga happening. It's kind of a good sign. See if I get a negation off this. Oh, just to get misstepped? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> uh, classic. Would really like Skull Clamp in this matchup, probably. Maybe it doesn't matter. Like, are they really beating Construct Tokens? I guess they can have Dress Down. Dress Down's pretty damn good. Don't think I'm eating this jet. I have more things to do. Oh, the Goif? Okay, I thought we were blue-black, but it looks like we are some kind of bug Luris. Maybe that means they're not on Saga at all. There is a Luris Deathrite Shaman deck that Medvedev put together recently. I thought was pretty interesting. A nice take on the Luris archetype that probably preys pretty heavily in the Saga Mirror. Not the Saga Mirror, but the Luris Mirror, because you're opting not to play Saga and just attacking it with, like, superior threats. Interesting. Uh, though, if you don't have a Wasteland... You are still liable to just die. Uh, this feels like a Shadow Spear. How much does this cost to equip? Two. It's kind of an annoying number to equip. We can Ozolith, but is Ozolith in? I don't know like how this card works. <laughs> is Ozolithing really good here? Doesn't feel like it. So I can play an automat. I can play an inspector into an automaton, or I can go automaton inspector if I get extra mana. I can't equip this shadow spear no matter what. I mean, it's got to be still a shadow spear, right? Probably. Just get this Inspector in play to buff my Construct token. And I guess my Saga is an enchantment and a land. So that's a huge buff onto the uh, Tarmogoy. But I mean, it's not it's not a Construct token, so. This is like the scenario where this Tarmogoy would outsize Construct tokens on a deck that was not a dedicated artifact deck, like a Thlurus Saga deck. Uh, with the the, the Tarmor would just brick wall it, but because I am dedicated artifact deck, my construct tokens are just humongous. Ancestral is a good one though. I don't know what kind of removal this deck plays actually. I should go look. Medvedev. Ooh, time walk is a good draw too. So this deck is on four oof. Oh no, four oof, four Tarmogoyf, four death right. Any removal? Loam lock. Four vigor. Oh. This matchup looks atrocious. <laughs> How am I going to beat four vigor main? Oh no. Things are so bad. Uh, well. Let's give it our best try. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> I just looked at the deck list and it was instant despair. Right, this one got forced. Pitching Fluster. Quip. So if I get Vigored, life is pretty bad. So I just can't play around that. So get in there, team. Oh, this is a Bowmaster. Bowmaster is pretty good here too, isn't it? Shoot my Ravager. I guess it just goes on to here, so it stays the same. I mean, this must be the one Bowmaster in their deck, right? Though I guess they have, like, shoot and block angles. Double block angles. I can't really, like, eat... Oh, they just have Vigor on... Oh. So do I die from that? I mean, I very clearly eat this, 7-7, seven, seven. and then this dies, 6-6s, six, I guess I just save this guy, and they get to eat one. Hmm. Well, they're at one. They have one card in hand, two Tarmogoyfs. This is currently big enough to win. Put Luris in hand. Pass. A lot of good draws on my side of the table as well. Steel Overseer makes this one larger. Attack all wins. Damn. Okay. Oh boy. We just took game one against four vigor, four oof, which I consider to be extremely lucky. I would think this matchup looks horrendous. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What do we do? Four dismember comes in for sure. And then what? And then what? Probably want to take out Overseer. Because it's an activated ability and it doesn't do anything and dies to Bowmaster and I think it's the worst one of the cards, right? For this exact matchup. All right, not a bad one. We keep these. It's not great, but it's not, I mean, it's not good. We have multi five. That's a way we win. If we win, I get like we lose to Workshop, but then we beat four Collector, four Tarmogoy, four Vigor dot deck. Like we can't, we're like, that's not illegal, right? Like we can't, that can't actually happen, right? Sapphire, go. Okay, I got a patchy boy. Does it resolve? Oh, it resolves. Oh, it resolves. That's bad for the opponent, for anyone keeping track at home. I don't want the patchy boy resolving. All right, well, I put eight power in play. So, your move, Tarmogoyfer. You need a second mana to vigor this automaton. Oh, they hit the second mana to vigor the automaton. Okay. Not much I can do here. Definitely want to do the trigger. All right, well, I assume my 10 power is about to be eliminated by one spell. Absolutely normal gaming. Yup. Bro, Force of Vigor should not exist. Pew. 
Pew. God, I worked so hard on my creature. Just for it to die. It's winnable. It's winnable. It's winnable. It's winnable. 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 Any winnables? Put Luris in hand. All right, we got that covered. What else we got? Arcbound. I like that. Equip this. New <laughs> the snoof out. All right. Well. I got one more. Can't equip and dismember in the same turn. Wasteland. They can't actually cast Luris, so they're gonna hold this for Saga. Smat. Oh, they're not. I lied. Pretty sure this Ravager has got to get rowdy. Uh, yeah, we're going in. Take four. <laughs> oh, no. Wait. Yeah, I couldn't eat this, right? What is the snuff out life? It's the anti mono white. So if I had, yeah, destroy this. All right, well, I am out of action. Opponent can't cast Luris. That's all they have. Creatures? That's a creature. I don't have the land yet. I mean, I think I was supposed to play into mono removal, right? You don't have anything to bring back. Okay, I'm not going to kill that yet. Because my opponent can just lure us it back. Ooh. Okay, land, incubator. Okay. I have to hold this dismember for Luris. And then I just need to outpower these oofs. At least they're not Tarmogoyfs. Tarmogoyfs would be a problem here, wouldn't they? Oh, they're both coming in. Rowdy. No, I'm so close to playing my entire hand. Uh, attack. What do they have? The one bowmaster? It's fine. If I take too much damage, I can't dismember this Luris, though. Come on, just give me a workshop. I deserve a workshop. Workshops? No! Chat, I need one mana. I could, like, win the game. Probably a force, right? Should I dismember and try to win? Probably. I go to two. No! They hit the land drop! I dismember, I go to two, and I can't use my tome. Which seems bad. I mean, it's super bad. Everything is bad. I simply drew all my three drops. <laughs> Sad game. That was so sad. I feel like that game was actually super winnable. My opponent had Luris in hand. No mana to use their spells. All I need to do is draw my... I guess they wasteland in my workshop and that was enough, huh?
if they had held it for Saga, they would lose, but they wasteland in the workshop and it was good enough. I mean, I could have not eaten all of the Moxin, but then I got oofed anyways, right? I feel like eating was correct. Put myself in the position to win. I'm not, I'm not upset about that. I just wanted to hit my land. Yeah, I'm not sure this is good enough, but I'm going to play it probably. Need to hit another land. Hmm. Automaton is the best card in my deck, right? Feels like it is. It makes them pay mana for Vigor. Imagine if they had to pay zero mana for Vigor. How broken would that card be? <laughs> Death, right? Ooh, pretty. Triple dismember. It's kind of annoying. Kind of need a, you know, uh, you know, land to cast those. You don't really want to draw three. I mean, maybe you do. Kind of depends. It looks so bad, man. It looks so bad. Oh, they have a fetch land, so they have more mana. Things are not good. The Goyf. All right. Land. Chat. Chat works. Cast Jet. Use Jet to kill the Tarmogoyf. I don't want to eat my jet, but they're not going to block. Eh, it's fine. Have a vigor. Ah, so bad. Take eight. That's all I got. Oof, there it is. They only have one card left. Land? Nice. Saga's a great draw there. Kind of want to see what they do first here. They're making two mana. Snuff out? No way. Their last card snuff out? Wow. Crazy. I got four no cards in hand. You can buy Luris. Wow. Mm. Have them fetch. I got. I can't actually dismember this now because if I do, then they can instantly replay Luris. They can make all the mana first. I have to wait, dismember Luris first, and then move forward like that. Just fetch and eat a creature here. Go to fly. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. I guess I needed a black source, so unless they had a second by you. Uh, they have a Tarmogoyf. They didn't float the mana, though. They needed to float the mana first. Uh, 
So now they don't get the Tarmogoyf. It's really bad for them. They had to float mana with this, or use Deathrite Shaman mana first, and then play Luris, and then play the Tarmogoyf immediately. Currently winning on board. Ballista. It's got to be lethal. I don't think any of this matters. Woo, Ravagers get there, baby. Let's go. <laughs> ah, we beat four Goy, four Tarmogoy, four, ooh, four Vigor. That's wild. <laughs> okay, here we go. Back with more Ravager Shops action here. Incubator Shop. I want to call it Incubator Shops. That's... That's definitely gonna be on the on the thumbnail. Like this card is I've never cast this card in my life, so we got we gotta get it in here. It's been okay. It hasn't been bad. I don't think it's been good yet, but it hasn't been bad. Which is a good sign, actually. Fire truck, notable vine pilot. We are not playing any uh wastelands or needles in our deck, so that could be challenging. Um I don't know why this deck has no needles in it. It definitely could use a needle. I think at the end of this video, if you make it all the way to the end, I will make changes to the deck and give you a suggestion on how I would approach this kind of deck in the future. Um, but for now, let's just do what we have and <laughs> just battle with what we have. I think this is probably just not enough. This looks better. Incubator, this doesn't get reduced. These can play be both be played. Probably want to just go hard. Let's just go hard. If they're on workshop or bazaar, things are just pretty bad no matter what, right? Oh, Saga Gaming. Exciting. Manifold Key or is a Saga Go? Interesting. All right, so... I'm going to get a Sapphire in play, and then I'm going to go... I got both beasts in my hand, huh? I'm going to name Construct, and I'm going to play a Steel Overseer for free and a Scrapwork Recombiner for free. Not for free, for one. Next turn, we can play both these Ravagers anyways, and then we have Overseer plus double Ravager getting buffed, and then we can sack a Ravager and find a free thing. Oh, are we getting patchwork Casey eyed? Oh, we're just getting jeweled. Okay, we're just super dead to jewel. How does our deck beat anything? Never mind, never mind. Take back what I said. Our deck is so dead, man. <laughs> oh, they're just going full key. Yeah, I do be like that sometimes. Interesting they played all this out into uh, Mind Break Trap mana, but I guess it doesn't matter. It's game one. Damn. All right, I feel like we, our deck should be good against Luris Saga, and we haven't played against Luris Saga. I know we did beat Collector Oof, Tarmogoy, Force of Vigor dot deck, so I feel like we should take our blessings and count them very, very carefully. So, so we shouldn't need a Shadow Spear or an Ozolith, uh, and then Recombiner looks worse, or I guess Hangerback looks terrible here. All right, let's run like this. Let's try that. Oh, boy. I mean, we have some Mind Break Traps at least, but... This is where the Null Rods come in, in our Null Rod Aggro Shops deck. <laughs> I think this video is going to just end up being a great example of why we build Aggro Shops the way we, we do build. Obviously, the power level is there, but when you just choose not to interact with anything and just attack, there's there's some consequences to that. <laughs> well, I think that actually, like, one of the biggest problems is losing the workshop matchup was not ideal. Though, like, even... I don't know. I guess, like, our best cards in the workshop matchup are the Chief and the Foundries. 
pretty sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's try this again. Hopefully we have a Mind Break Trap in our opener and a bunch of mana. We don't have a bunch of mana. Sad day. This one has a bunch of attackers, but it has no Mind Break Trap. But we can cast a Mind Break Trap if we draw it. So we're probably keeping. Um, so we bought him this Ancient Tomb. Is that better? We can go... Workshop. Hmm. We can go hmm, Saga Lotus. No, we could go Lotus Inspector Automaton off of Saga. I guess I don't really want to do that. We can just go Lotus Automaton Saga Overseer. I guess that's our best line. Then we just want to draw a binary trap and hard cast it. If we get a turn, I guess. <laughs> I just don't think we're getting a turn. This is not the matchup we want to see. Yeah, the one ring is also pretty good against us. The manifold key is pretty good against us. The magic cards are good against us. What isn't good against us? <laughs> I'm dying, chat. I'm dying. <laughs> no. I can't beat the one ring. I can't beat the I can't beat this deck. This matchup does not seem remotely winnable. How are would you ever like even consider winning this matchup? Like you just can't. I mean, this is war playing inspector is worse than making a construct, so whatever. I'm just gonna make a construct and Overseer it and hope my opponent. I don't know, man. Draws twenty lands. Like, what do I? What do I what do I, they're gonna. They have a ring and a and a key. I'm dead. <laughs> this is why we play Null Rod, not Ravager. Ah, I'm bolt keyed. All right, I've been vanquished. I've learned my lesson the hard way. <laughs> It's okay. We're right back at it. We're just going to do it again. Come on. Reveal Luris. That's the best deck in the format. Why is no one revealing Luris? Everyone is not playing Luris. It's Dredge. We're doomed. <laughs> Get me out. I don't have any Wastelands. <laughs> uh, what am I doing to myself? How can we not register any Wastelands? Like the the patchwork KCI deck can choose not to register wastelands because it's doing a powerful combo. We're not doing that, though. It does have wastelands in the board, so is there good news? Not really. Like we're not actually beating a dredge draw, right? <laughs> Their deck is better at playing artifact creatures than mine is. <laughs> How is that legal? <laughs> oh, shit, man. It's so silly. I'm gonna play Inspector Automaton. It's just the best use of my mana, and then next turn we'll play the rest of the shitters and hope it works, I guess. How is my opponent's deck zero mana play two four four artifact creatures? My deck workshop play a three two? Something's not right here, chat. Something is just not right. Oh, free. Free lightning helix. Free 1-1. One, one. That's actually a 3-3. Three, three. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I just tricked myself into registering a cool 5-0 list. I'm not mad. <laughs> no, it actually has a 3-1-2. And another 3-3. Three, three. It doesn't even matter, man. It doesn't even matter. At least we have a lot of hate in our sideboard. Because we sure as hell aren't winning with what we have here. Can't attack. We're at 23. No, I got to not die. There's so many creatures in play. It's not balanced.
We did play against a Luris deck, but we didn't play against any Luris Saga decks. But I'm not even sure that's a, you know, I said it's a good matchup. I should, I should stand by my statement. I'm not sure there are good matchups. Well, how did we 5 0? How did this deck 5 0? Just plays against four Vigor and, and wins, anyways. <laughs> uh, two more prize of Algums, all four? Oh, they're at 12 cards. I guess that makes sense. How many chills? Uh, block, block, block. These are coming back. Whatever, whatever, take seven, go to two, die in the air. I guess if I draw a walking bliss, I can win, right? True? False? I guess I'm glad I didn't use my ancient tomb. Hmm. I guess I'm always going to die to creeping chills, right? One... Yeah, they have three creeping chills left in their deck. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna die. Of course, we're gonna die. <laughs> okay, it's fine. We have four Tormod's Crypt and three Graph Digger's Cage. No needle, though. What cards are bad? Ozolith? Sclamp? Shadow Spear is good, actually, in this matchup. Um, I don't know. Steel Overseer? Kind of want to have a Steel Overseer that we can fetch with our Recombiner here. Uh, I feel like we trim on Incubators. Yeah, it's probably fine. No worries. Just, just Dredge. Everyone told me Dredge is dead. Terrible deck, so... All right, well, I have seven cards. Yeah, there we go. All right, okay. Oh, uh, man, these cards are bad, though. What am I even doing? Like, what does this hand do, Justin? Why are we playing this hand? What am I getting? What? What is, what am I, what am I doing? I mean, I have a Tormod script. I have to keep, right? I guess we just play a hanger backwalker. Like I don't think we play the Tormod script out. I think we have to hold that. I guess I can get griefed, but I feel like playing it out doesn't make sense, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. I think their mulligan went better than my mulligan. Amalgam, Icarid, Hollow One, Cage. Arcbound Ravager. Force, no cards. I think we're winning on board at the moment. Obviously, I'm taking a million here, but that's okay. Patchwork. Well, we don't have infinite time here. I'm dying. I think I'm gonna have to chump block this time though. Kind of hoping to draw like a workshop, get everything in play, instantly have a stronger board. All three cards to the yard. Icarid, triple amalgam. I can still wait for them to Icarid. It's fine. I don't want to give them an activation in their upkeep for no reason. 
I mean, I'm just losing. Who am I kidding myself here? They stacked them the right way. I can't eat their... Uh, I guess I miss eating an Ickerd if I do it this way. Yeah, I guess it's worse. I don't know. Like, letting them have a bizarre activation in their upkeep, giving them a free dredge. Is that worse? Better or worse? Maybe my mistake, though. I mean, I have a cage. So I took three damage for no reason. This is kind of a better... We're just dying. I just have an atop I just have an ancient tomb and no other mana, and I have drawn no other mana. Okay, I get an attack. I mean, if I do draw maybe I should just play that for zero, make this thing a three three and double block. No, I kinda want this thing to just become a five five, right? Alright, my opponent stopped. Cage stops my opponent. Was there a time I could have played Cage earlier? It would have been better. It's possible. Black Lotus. God bless. I win the game. Oh, I've been struggling here. Uh, can I attack? No, not yet. Soon, though. Oh, wait. Can't they just dredge into a creeping chill and kill me? Or no? Yeah. I'm, uh... Yeah. All right, fifth and final round here. We finally have a Luris against us. Let's do it. This is our time. Look look at our hand. We're going to go off. I'm so excited. Keep. We finally got our Luris opponent. We're ready to battle. None of that bad dredge stuff. I've been told completely unplayable dick. Blue, oh, they get to look at my hand. Not great. Now they can counter my Black Lotus and make me sad. Yeah, that's right. Read Urza's Incubator. Bet you will. Ah, Ancestral Recall. That's a good one. <sighs> We're going to get our ass kicked, aren't we? I've talked up this matchup the entire video. We finally get it, and they're just going to Ancestral Black Lotus us. You hate to see it. You can't just let a good Artificer win. Pretty sure we're supposed to play Saga first. Black Lotus... Maybe I just don't play Incubator, and I instead just play Automaton Automaton. Yeah, I think it's better. I think Incubator is just, like, so bad here against Negation and Spell Pierce and everything that it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, if they had Spell Pierce, I guess they could have Spell Pierce the Black Lotus. But, like, these Automatons are really hard to remove. Get them in play. They're going to pump my Academy anyways. I guess if I get Wastelanded on my Saga and I don't have a Mox, then it's bad. I guess if I get countered and then it's bad. I mean, it's real bad, no matter what. I just think that this play is the play I would have made if my opponent had gone, like, land pass or something. But if my opponent is going to go yeah, probe Ancestral, know your hand, have Black Lotus up, it just doesn't feel right to play the Incubator there. Which is sad, obviously. Obviously, I could have gone for higher octane plays as well, like uh, Lotus, Inspector, Academy, playing. I guess that's not higher octane. I think just playing these at Patchworks is my best attack. Let's see. My opponent just went Brainstorm. I don't know if that means they're going to Lorien off of their Sapphire or, or if they have a fetch. They have a fetch. So this is just buyback Luris. No? Interesting. This is buy Luris, play Luris if they want. I mean, 
Should just make construct tokens, right? I'm not attacking here. Doesn't I feel like attacking here is asking for something really bad to happen? Oh, they have their own plans, I guess. Two Tundras means it's probably blue white. Cathar Commando. Oh, swords. All right. Well, I mean, this still gets me a construct token, so whatever. All right. Well, now I think I attack. I guess the worst thing that could happen was a containment priest or something. I mean, they still have Luris, Bobble, Luris. Or, sorry. Buy Luris, play Luris, retail Bobble, or or Lotus. It's still bad. Yeah, active Saga with so much Moxon. Man, it's just a recall. Hell of a drug, huh? <laughs> All right, buy Luris, play Luris. I mean, we have an active Academy, though. We didn't get Wasteland at all in this game, which is really big. The Saga is definitely less scary than a Wasteland, which is typically the case. Wasteland here would just ruin me. I guess Time Walk ruins me, too. I'm hoping I have enough mana to play my whole hand this turn. Lavinia. So that turns off Incubator, but only Incubator. It's not too bad. So I think I like Construct Token. No. I think I like Float of Mana, Soul Ring, Inspector play all my other cards. I just need to advance my board. Soul Ring is the best way to do it. Play this for two mana, leaves me with three mana, leaves me with a two two. Yeah, it's fine. I don't mind this spot. It doesn't look that bad. Seven seven five five attack. And this is with them killing one of my patchwork automatons because they just had so much mana. They had uh two mop two and and a lotus. They basically had the most possible mana, really. This is like one of their strongest draws that are doesn't involve wasteland. So I guess they're just off it. Wow. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> Sick Luris deck. <laughs> uh, okay, it's fine. I mean, I'm not gonna no celebrating yet. My opponent just gets better post board. They could have Serenity for all we know. Do we want Dismember? I think we're good with just Ballista, right? Do we want Cage? I think we just want maybe we just want some Dismembers here. I think I want to trim. I don't know if they'll actually trim negations, but maybe I'll trim a hanger back and an incubator. Seems fine. That was sweet though. We just overpowered them. We didn't even get to use the incubator thing. They just wait, they just had no force of will. Or maybe they had a negation and they I mean, if they had a negation, they probably should have just negated the lotus. But it's like, I don't know. It's just I think it's just a read thing where I read that opponent might have negation, so I have to not play Incubator kind of deal. What does this do? This is Automaton, Lotus, Inspector. I think you just bottom the jet and keep all the action. I'm not sure if that's right, but I feel like I want all the action. Oh, another probe. Looking at my hand? That's cheating. Imagine just paying zero mana and looking at your opponent's hand. You just like go across the table. You just grab their card to say, hey, let me look. Unreal. How do they allow this? Saga Gaming, fair. Soul Ring, strong. All right. 
Patchy boy. Any resolvers? Nope. Patchwork a little too good. Wait, what? I'm gonna force the Lotus. Ah, uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, I hope I draw mana. I got rid of my jet. So I guess I get wastelanded here and I lose immediately. Hmm. All right, draw workshop, I guess. I don't know. I guess I could have put back one of the three drops for the jet. The jet doesn't actually help me though, right? Like the jet doesn't actually help me. The jet really wouldn't matter. Uh, it looks bad. I think we're dead. Wasteland is so broken. Ah. Wasteland is so sick. What a good card. I hear it's in more than 55% of deck. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I mean, my kid, I kid. Card's so strong. I've been thinking a lot about Wasteland recently just because it's hard to evaluate just how much like the Wasteland percentage versus the Saga percentage is what keeps, you know, Bizarre in like a reasonable spot that it's in right now instead of like the absurd spot that it was in prior. And it makes me think that decks like just weren't playing enough Wastelands pre-Saga. But the format was really different. It's hard to say. Like, you don't really want to play Wasteland against PO, right? So maybe maybe not a conclusion you can draw. I'm very dead here, huh? Okay, cool. All right. Noted, I should maybe keep an additional mana source. I mean, keeping one mana source doesn't matter here. I just need to have more mana sources. My deck does not have a lot of mana sources, so maybe mulliganing a, a, a land in a Moxin is not actually legal. I want to get this as an incubator back in my deck. Like we have 13 lands plus seven. This is like a really low, really low number of lands. This is like the kind of mana base I'd play if I was playing the KCI deck, but we're like a little, I mean, we don't have that high of a curve, but three is a lot bigger than two. Emerald, Soul Ring, Automaton. It's probably a good enough. Can't get wastelanded if we don't simply don't play any lands, correct? Maybe the Overseer is better than the Automaton. No, I'm pretty sure we're going to play the Automaton first. Just get that going. Emerald. Soul Ring. Automaton. F6. All right. Seven cards from the opponent. What's your plan? Problem. Target them. Me. Target me. Okay, target me. What am I playing next turn? I like to think maybe draw a land and play two cards would be ideal. <laughs> Tundra. Sapphire. Seal? No! Wait, they're not going to seal my soul ring? It's very nice of them to not seal my soul ring. They're that concerned about patchwork. They're going to pay four mana for it. Bruh. Oh, they just sealed that thing. Sure. It's fine. I think I would have snap sealed soul ring. Like I didn't play any land and you're just going to like let me have a soul ring. Is this just swords? Oh, let's put Luris. They're just going to go for the looping Luris. I have that kind of answered in my hand. Jet. 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 All right. Pretty sure I'm playing everything out right now. And then next turn I'll have, and these just like the best use of my mana, right? Hopefully they don't have like Black Lotus. Take seven. Obviously they can play Bobble off Luris, but they could always do that basically, even with this member up. Patchwork Automaton is a hell of a magic card. This card is so sick. I love it. Passing. Chief? 
chief is worse than a recombiner, I think. Swords. Uh, okay. We also have Tutor for Constructs here. It's also a modular card. This card's sweet, too. Start turning Soul Rings into Walking Ballistas, or I guess this gets Luris Lotus. Okay. The problem is I can't really stop them from getting Seal if they just play a land ahead of time. Am I, are my opponents going to make the mistake again? Like if they play a fetch land here and not be able to play seal, or they just can't and they're just gonna get back bobble or lotus. <laughs> One problem is I want to attack with this thing, not sacrifice artifacts for constructs. Though I guess if I make four mana, sacrifice an artifact for construct, get a walking ballista, play the walking ballista, and activate, it's really good. So, ah, seal is happening. Kill the Overseer. We have a pretty cool play if they kill the Overseer, where we could... No, I was thinking like maybe we could hit the walker with a dismember and then make the things really big not really just just doing this on their turn so i don't get uh negated All right the luris is dealt with so now the question becomes it's just attack all right let's just attack all I don't think I need to get a walking ballista here. All right, your move opponent. You gotta have something good. This is fun. This is exactly how I kind of envisioned the Luris Saga matchup going. If you could play against Luris Saga five straight rounds, this seems pretty reasonable. And my opponent had, like, the better version of Lara Saga versus what we were doing with, like, seals and stuff. This is really cool, too. I can, like, turn these mocks in into walking ballistas. I can turn it into, like, anything, but I think walking ballistas is usually the thing that makes sense. The problem is I just made this construct guy so big that I just don't want to do that. So. Not only do I have lethal with all my attackers, I also have a shadow spear. So what can my opponent really do? I don't know. Lotus Serenity Time Walk. I think you already used Lotus. Hercules Recall is obviously a good one here. These decks don't typically play Hercules Recall. Hercules Recall is more of a combo-oriented card. They have Serenity! No! Time Walk? Bowmaster? That's not enough, right? Block, block. That's not enough. Close. Close. They do have Serenity. Wow. Crazy. That was all I thought for sure they were going to time walk me. Wow. All right. We got there. There are obviously answers that Lurus Saka can play to make the workshop matchup good. It's just most of the time they don't. So well, not bad, actually. Two, three. Uh, we beat... Somehow we beat what I think is probably one of the worst possible matchups in Vigor, 4 Vigor, 4 Oof, 4 Tarmogoyf main. We beat 
Lurus Saga Blue White, which I kind of think that's like one of the matchups we should be geared for. We lost a workshop matchup that I think we should probably be favored in on the and like in, on the average, but I could definitely see losing when they have like a turn one Golos plus Saga with Trip Mind Lock and that kind of thing. I don't think we can ever really beat Jewel. That seems impossible. And Dredge, we need to do some fixes. So thank you for watching. If you're still all the way end, let's make some changes to the deck. Because I think that there's theoretically some nice things going on here. Uh, the first thing I would do is I'm adding Strip Mine for Wasteland. And I don't think that's negotiable. I think you just have to play Wasteland if you're playing Vintage and not playing Combo. Wasteland is the strongest, probably non-restricted land in the format. Um, even stronger than Saga. Uh, and you definitely, especially if you're engaging in a Saga Mirror, you need to be having Strip Mines and Wastelands in your deck. Um, I think the Ozolith is likely just nonsense. Um, I had no instances of where it came up. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I kind of feel like the, the Ozolith is probably just too cute. I also kind of think the Skull Clamp is a little probably too cute, but I, I think there's like a lot of upside to playing the Skull Clamp and giving you some kind of like serious churn engine, especially with the ability to sack things to, um, the Ravagers we added. So I kind of liked it. Um, I would like to put this Needle in the main. I think Needle is by far the best Urza Saga target in the format. Uh, and, and then... In the board, I think what you want to do is you want to play Ley Lines. Uh, I think Ley Lines are just the, the best piece of hate. Um, so I would take out Crips and I would play Ley Lines. Ley Lines and Cages. And then can this deck afford to play a Null Rod? I, theoretically, there's a world where you can play Null Rod in this deck. Like, it's not great for you. But if you wanted to actually have a chance against Jewel, you'd play Null Rods. You probably just don't care. Um, so we have to cut five cards to add to our Wastelands here. Um, the obvious answer is it's probably just this Incubator. <laughs> Which is probably not what people want to hear. But uh, I mean, it's got to be three drops. Or I don't know how good like walkers are actually. Um, I definitely made them better by playing Ravager, but I don't know. I it, I think it can't be really... I mean, you could maybe trim A Overseer. Uh, you could trim like A Overseer, two Incubators, and one of each of these or something. Or like two Walkers, something like two Walkers, one Overseer, two Incubators or something. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know the exact number on what you want to do. I definitely think you want to cut some of the expensive, more expensive cards and, and find some room. I don't think, you know, I, I'm not going to confidently say those are the exact cuts, but I would 100% be looking to add the five strip mines and the needle. Uh, and I would switch to ley lines in the board. And I think you probably just concede the jewel matchup. Maybe if you want to beat the jewel matchup, I would play null rod. I feel like that's the only way forward. It's like the only thing you have. I would play traps and null rods and live on a dream and a prayer. It's not unwinnable if you go like turn one ancient tomb, null rod, play a bunch of like foundry inspectors and chief of the foundries. Like that's a thing you can do and I think it probably works out okay. Hope you enjoyed this off-stream vintage content. We'll have more of this coming every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on this YouTube channel. I might even try to sneak in more than that. Um, if I don't have to commit to, you know, live streams, I should be able to fit in more of these recorded videos. Uh, it'll just be better usage of my time. Uh, for at least the next month. I do I do expect to go back to live streaming. I love live streaming. I think live streaming is much more enjoyable for me. Uh, Content-wise, I don't know if it's uh, better or worse. Um, some people really like chat. Some people don't like chat. Sometimes I get too involved with chat. You know, there's a lot of pros and cons. Um, especially, like, if you watch the, the last video, probably aired on uh, the Wednesday before this video. Um, chat can be a super detriment to the quality of both my play and the, the, the VOD. Uh, but it can also be a really big deal. Uh, you can find lines and, and we can learn from, from chat too. So there's a lot of, you know, give and take pros and cons, like I said. So, but for now, uh, until the next showcase, we're going to be doing, making some sweet off stream content. I'm going to be making decks that I think are interesting decks that hit the metagame hard. And, uh, I'll always be on the lookout for some sweet new ones like this one. Congrats to reality sculptor on their five Oh, a very impressive five Oh, if you ask me based on the initial list. <laughs> so maybe an extremely powerful wizard. Thank you, Reality Sculptor, and I'll see you guys next time.